You know, I love the fact that everyone continues to call the 24-7 championship a joke. I love the fact that everyone continues to call it a joke, but the joke is the most entertaining thing about these shows. Yeah, it's a joke, but it's the most entertaining. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous, man. So, because, so, I, I had a feeling that something was going to happen to our truth tonight on SmackDown Live because, you know, I felt like he's been champion for a very while. I felt like he was getting very lucky during his time as a, as the champion. So I was kind of thinking something's going to happen to him on SmackDown tonight. And indeed it did. During uh, Shane McMahon's uh, appreciation night, um, during the Shane McMahon appreciation night, our truth uh, was battling Drake Maverick, and uh, our truth defeated Maverick with a suplex slam, pinning Maverick, and um, and Shane McMahon was so angry about this is that Elias and Drew McIntyre gang up on our truth Drew McIntyre delivers a Claymore kick and Elias becomes the new 24-7 champion and then I get all those little crybabies on Twitter I get all those crybabies on Twitter going uh, they got the joke oh my god Elias is, is the 24-7 championship and now he's in the main event of Smackdown Live this title's a joke this title, this title is nothing but a joke, man. Oh my god, it's such a joke. You know, I always hear it. It's a joke title, and now Elias is holding it. Oh my god, this title's a joke. Yeah, but Elias is a joke. Elias is a joke. So you people know, Elias is a joke. Elias has been a joke for the last year and a half. So apparently a joke winning a joke championship is a joke. Elias winning the universe yearning with yearning. I'm all over I'm, I'm saying random words. Winning the 24-7 championship, you know, it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me that much. It didn't bother me that much. Why the hell does it have to concern you miserables? You, you you worry about AEW so bloody much. What what's so, what's so important about about this? Jesus Christ! The twenty four seven stuff is the most entertaining thing out there, but you continuously call this a joke. Yeah, the joke is the most entertaining thing about 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 WWE television. Keep on hating on the twenty four seven championship. Was the Undertaker a joke? When he held the Hardcore Championship, was Rob Van Dam a joke? When he was holding the Hardcore Championship. Answer me that, all you Hardcore lovers. Oh, we want something like this back in the WWE. And we get it, and all of you bitch and moan like a bunch of little babies. Be all because it's not called Hardcore Title. It's the only reason why you don't like it, because it's not called Hardcore Title. And the design of the championship. That's another reason why you don't like the 24 championship. Get over it! The 24 7 championship! And I will never change my mind about this! You can try and convince me all you want. I'm never gonna change my mind about this until you people lighten up. The 24 7 championship is the most entertaining thing about WWE television! And I'm never changing my mind! Continue to call this championship a joke while I continue to derail your precious hardcore championship. Yeah, Undertaker was a joke when he was hardcore champion, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, Rob Van Dam was a joke when he was hardcore champion, right? All the people that won the hardcore championship, yeah, they're jokes too. The hardcore championship is basic, was basically the same thing as this 24-7 championship. It was a title that was never meant to be taken seriously. Grow 
は So, Elias is a joke because he won the won this championship, but he's a joke anyway. He's a joke anyway. So then, in the main event, Roman Reigns and Art Truth took on Drew McIntyre and Elias, and Roman and Art Truth won, obviously. And Shane McMahon, he banned the twenty four seven rule during the main event. So then that way no one can attack Elias. And I find it funny that people complained about this too. Uh, you do know Shane's a heel. Of course the heel is going to do something to protect his boy. How freaking delusional can you people be? Of course Shane McMahon's going to ban the rule just so that no one attacks Elias during the tag team match. Yes, it's the concept of the title. 24-7. You gotta defend it anytime, anywhere, any place. Yes, I get it. But Shane's a heel. Of course he's gonna ban the rule for the for the main event. Once the main event was over, and I was telling people this. I was telling people this when people were bitching and moaning about Elias becoming the champion. I said, watch, Elias won't hold that title for long. And what happened? Roman Reigns delivered a spear to Elias to win the tag team match, and then and then R Truth crawls over. Because the match was over, the 24-7 rule became open again after the match ended. So the match was over, Archeruth crawled over to Elias and pinned, and pinned Elias to become the 24-7 champion. So the joke champion is once again Archeruth, right? Yeah, the most entertaining thing's a joke. Get out of here, please. Enough is enough with the jokes. Enough is enough with you miserable jokes. The more you call the 24-7 championship a joke, you're calling the hardcore championship a joke. Remember that. So the show started off with Kofi Kingston and Kevin Owens. Okay, I thought this was a, uh, an interesting way to start things off. And then we go into Kofi Kingston versus Kevin Owens. Now, I will say this. I wasn't a big fan of this. I'm not a big fan of the WWE Champion opening the show. This tends to happen a lot when I play WWE 2K19's Universe Mode, where they have whoever I have champion, he's opening the show. I'm not a fan of having the, the main champion start off the show, because if he's your main champion, he should really be in the main events. He should be in the more important storylines. They weren't continuing his whole feud with Dolph Ziggler on SmackDown. They continued it on Raw, but they didn't really continue it that much on SmackDown. So I didn't really like it that So I wasn't really a big fan of this that much. I didn't like the fact that they had Kofi Kingston be the opening thing of the show and never to be seen again. So Kofi beat Owens. And I must say, the champions have been booked well. The champions have been booked well. They haven't lost a match since becoming the champion. So at least people should be grateful about that at least. We had Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan. They came out with the SmackDown Tag Team titles. They were talking. And uh, this was entertaining. I really liked it. I, I, liked Dan I really am liking Daniel Bryan's heel gimmick. You know, it's so, it's so entertaining. He knows how to play a good heel. Despite the fact that a guy that I thought he was a natural babyface, he, he became out a great heel. Johnny Gargano could turn out the same way one day. But, but yeah, they made a joke. They, 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 they did a knock-knock joke. And I wonder how many miserables didn't like this because it was a knock-knock joke. Rowan said knock-knock. And Caleb Braxton said, who's there? And Rowan said, the SmackDown Tag Team Division. And Kayla responded with, the SmackDown Tag Team Champion, Champion Division, the SmackDown ta Tag Team Division, who? And then Rowan says, exactly. Because the Tag Team Division's a joke. And it's a darn shame it is. And I, and I hate to agree with them. It is. It is a joke. There's only one team that I think is worthy 
on taking those titles from them, which I'll get to in a second. Kayla responds, I like Kayla Braxton, by the way. She's actually, I like Kayla Braxton. She's probably one of the better ring interviewers we've had for a while since Renee Young. And uh, she goes ahead and uh, says that, um, that there are some tag teams that would like to challenge you. And out came Heavy Machinery, Otis and Tucker. Now, I'm a big fan of Ot o Otis and Tucker. And, uh, you know, we, and I, you know, and I think it's, um, I, I think it's great that they're now finally getting an opportunity to compete with the tag team champions. I, 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 I said, I've been saying that these two guys should be featured. And also, the one other thing is, I wish they get again. I, I hate to, I hate to keep bringing up the wild card rule, but they really need to get rid of it. They really do need to get rid of that wild card rule. If they had maybe like, if they had like two wrestlers show up per 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 show with the wild card rule, maybe I wouldn't hate it as much. But four, nah. Sorry, I'm not a fan of that at all. But, but either way, guys, um, yeah, the heavy machinery, they wanted to challenge for the tag team titles. Brian and Rowan did accept, but, uh, they said, but not here in, 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 in fracking Oklahoma. Also, um, I w you know, cause Daniel Bryan, we know he's not going to go to the Super Showdown. I would not mind this match being used for the up-and-coming new pay-per-view called Stomping Grounds. I feel like I, I feel like that's a good uh, match to put on that uh, that um, you know that that pay-per-view. And also, I'm going to talk about something else real quick before I move on to the next match. Is a, is uh, Alistair Black? He cut another backstage promo in a dark room, and it sounds like he's getting bored. By uh, the sounds of his promo, he's uh, begging someone to challenge him. He's begging someone to pick a fight with him. And and on Twitter, and on Twitter, Buddy Murphy responded by saying, "I'll fight you, Alistair." And you know what? Go right ahead. This is something I would love. I would love to see Buddy Murphy. And Alistair Black go at it one on one. This is pay per view worthy. No need, no need for a title. You don't need to put the U.S. title, Intercontinental title, around their waist. You can just have these two guys go at it. Stomping grounds, Vince McMahon. WWE stomping grounds. You don't want Alistair Black for some reason. You don't want Alistair Black to go to Saudi Arabia because of his tattoos, apparently. No joke, that's what I literally heard why he's not allowed to go there because of his tattoos. I don't know why, but apparently tattoos is uh, why he's not allowed to go there. But yet, other wrestlers with tattoos, yeah, they're allowed to go there. Yeah, go, yeah, 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 right, WWE. But this is a match, Buddy Murphy, Alistair Black, this is a match that I would love to see for that stomping grounds. So, the, you've got two matches already prepared for you for stomping ground. Now, all you got to do is get ready for it, w w Vincent, man. Book it. You want to stand up to AEW? Have these two guys open up Stomping Ground with a 20, 25-minute classic? And, and there you go. That's a great way to excite the audience. And then you can follow it up with Ricochet and Cesaro. Sounds like a good idea to me. Anyway, moving on. We've got Mandy Rose versus Carmella. I love Mandy, man. I love her. She's she's she, she's just so adorable, and 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 she's just got so much. She's got a lot of charisma. People don't people people like to say the word charisma a lot. I feel like Mandy has charisma. She's got that charisma about her that is really good, and I want to see more of that. I want to see more of Mandy Rose, and the fact. And if there's one thing I will say that I don't like about this, yeah, I understand she's now a part of a front cover of a magazine cover. Muscle and fitness, I believe it is. 
But I don't want this. I don't want this to be fully part of her character because I don't like this. I don't like this because it gives me Eva Marie vibes. That's what this gives me. This gives me Eva Marie vibes. This is something that Eva Marie would do. Go on a magazine, you know, pose a couple of sexy photos, and then, you know, be on the front cover, and then she'd ask wrestlers to go ahead and sign it. I don't want Mandy Rose to become like an Eva Marie, and this is the one thing I've been fearing. I don't want all these fans to start calling her Eva Marie 2.0. I love Mandy. She's got all the potential in the world to be a women's champion, or hell, even put the tag team strap on her. She's got that potential. You just gotta let her ro roll with it. I hope this is a one-time thing, and they stop with this magazine stuff. Mandy got the win over Carmella. This was uh, well deserved. Mandy did deserve this win more than Carmella. And um, and, and yeah, I hope they uh, build up Mandy Rose to a future title shot. Even if it has to be against the Iconics, that's perfectly fine. And finally, guys, the last thing I'll talk about here, because I already talked about the 24-7 stuff and the Shane appreciation thing. You know, people like to say how Charlotte is always well-protected and, you know, she's always the most... She, she's always like the... She, she's like, oh my god, like WWE always, always well protects her. You know... Seeing Charlotte Flair with Lacey Evans, I don't like it. I don't like seeing her with Lacey Evans. And the fact that they're drinking tea together. And this is the same thing that Charlotte and Becky used to do back in the day when they used to do that tea time thing that they used to do. I liked it back then because it was Charlotte and Becky. Two people I liked. And you know what? I'm going to play the role of you fans to tell you guys how you guys sound. I don't like Charlotte Flair drinking tea with Lacey Evans. I don't like it. It makes her look silly. It makes her look dumb that she's aligning herself with somebody, which, by the way, on an exclusive interview, Lacey Evans trashed Charlotte. On, on the uh, exclusive interview from last week when they lost that tag team match, Lacey Evans trashed her, and here she is sipping cup of, sipping tea with Lacey Evans, the sassy Southern Bale. I don't want these two as a tag team. They don't fit together as a tag team. And even if they were a tag team, they'd be tag team champions in an instant, and all you people would complain about it. True fact. Because that's what you would do. Because that's what you're good at. So Bailey and Lacey Evans had a match. Bailey got the victory here. And Charlotte attacks Lacey. She was barefooted and all. Barefooted. She had no shoes on. I think she had no shoes on Charlotte. And she just boots. And she just gives a boot. I shouldn't say a boot. I guess I should give it. I guess I should call it a foot to the face because Charlotte was barefooted. Kicking Evans right in the face, right on the jaw, barefooted. And to be quite honest with you guys, this is going to be the final thing I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to wrap things up here. You know, I don't like Charlotte having Ric Flair's gimmick. As you guys know, because I made a video about it. And the one other thing that I do want to talk about is the fact that... People say Ric Flair is one of the great is one of the greatest heels of all time. And I agree. He is. But do you want to know what the most funny thing is? Is that Ric Flair, they didn't make him a babyface in his final years in WWE. It wasn't because he was a great babyface. He was never a good babyface. He was always great as a heel. They only made him a face in his final years is because, well. You know, he's a legend. He's the he, he's a legend. That's why they made him a babyface. I love Charlotte as a heel. I love Charlotte as a babyface. But do you want to but do you guys want to hear my honest opinion? My honest opinion is Charlotte Flair is better off being a babyface. Because I don't want her being replica of Ric Flair. Yeah, she already is with the robe and the title reigns. But 
But to be honest with you, Charlotte, I like Charlotte more as a face. She's a great heel, but I feel like Charlotte is better off being in a babyface role because at least that way it stems away from the Ric Flair, you know, family line. Like, Ric was a great heel, and you can have Charlotte as the as the babyface side of the family. You've got Ric Flair as the greatest heel, and you can have Charlotte as one of the b biggest babyfaces. I don't like this tat duo of Charlotte and Lacey. I would much rather see them feuding with each other. And Lacey Evans, I'm glad she's wrestling more because she's actually growing on me more. I like her ax I like her accent, the sex the southern bell. I love the accent. She sounds Texan with that accent. And um And yeah, she's proving she's proving a lot to me in the ring. Not her biggest fan yet, but you know, she's getting there. And, and I'm not liking her because she's blonde. Like, everybody's excuse nowadays to hate on blonde-haired women. So, so yeah, guys, that's everything I've got here for you guys for our SmackDown. I hope you guys uh, enjoy, enjoyed enjoyed this review. Hit that thumbs up if you guys did enjoy. Comment your opinions down below. Hit that like button as well. And... Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. And and subscribe as well. To get more videos as well. Thank you all so much for joining me. And I'll see you all in my next video. See you guys then.